Seems to be working that should be working. Ow! Oh. Pain, but working. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, I admit all the responsibility. Okay, put in writing. Isn't my word enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you want me to write? Your name and address. Okay, what else? Better write your phone number. I think this is a put-on. Now, your motorcycle's not damaged, and neither are you, as far as I can see. Wait a minute. I might have internal injuries. Listen, maybe you'd prefer to make a settlement. You know, just between you and I. It'll avoid a long, drawn-out court battle. How much do you want? I've got an idea. Why don't you and I go somewhere, sit down, have a cup of coffee, and discuss it? After all, you might be a rich heiress, and I can be set for life. <laughs> You think I'm funny, huh? No, your nose is funny. You've got dirt on it. It must be exciting being a staff photographer on a newspaper. Do you like it? I like it just fine, not being on staff for the paper. I'm freelance. That way I come and go when I like, do the things I want to do, travel to all the places I dreamed about when I was a kid. They're running a picture story on the zoo. That I was interested in. When will it appear? This Sunday's paper. You can rush out and buy your very own copy on Saturday. Fantastic. <laughs> Great world we live in, huh? Tomorrow's news yesterday. I love it. Would you like another one? Sure, I'm through for the day. You don't have to get those negatives over the sun? Stop the presses, hold the front page, all that kind of stuff? <laughs> no, I have a dark room in my apartment. Tell you what, I'll forget everything. I won't sue for damages, even for the smudge on my nose. If? We spend the day together. Put it in writing. That includes dinner. <laughs> Deal. Okay, we'll spend the day together. I'll pick you up for dinner, say, 6.30, your place. Listen, I live right up the street from the lighthouse. It's a restaurant up at Coral Reef. Do you know it? Mm-hmm. We'll meet there. Okay, now I know the time and place but not the lady's name. <laughs> My name's Jobina Fair. Hi, Jobina. I'm Chris. Chris Owens. cigar smoke. There's a change of plan. It'll have to be the airport. He arrives there Sunday afternoon to pick up his daughter. I know. Well, this is a better picture of Henderson than the one I gave you. Any problems? What? My picture may be all over the Sunday edition of the newspaper. How's that? The how is not important. 
There are complications that I have to handle. No problems. Just complications. Now let's talk about the money. We've already deposited it in your numbered account. You can call Zurich and verify it if you like. How nice. It's open. Hey, Terry. Uh-huh. Beer in the refrigerator. No, no, thank you. With my spaghetti, I prefer Chianti. Spaghetti, huh? Mm-hmm. Jill whipped up a pot full and we invited. But I take it that's not why you're getting all duded up, hmm? No. You have a very smug look in your face. You want to tell me about uh, it? No, I don't no. think so. Okay. Tell Jill I'll take a rain check, and I'll see you later. Okay. Have a good time.
Yeah, I'm feeling all right. Hey. Hey. Glad you came out of it all right. Came out what? You know, last night. We chased that nut on the freeway at about 90 miles an hour. When we hit the off-ramp and skidded... We didn't crack up, Chris. Anyway, that was Wednesday night. I know. This is Friday. Friday, man. Yesterday was your day off, remember? Jill, can I talk to you for a second? Oh, sure. Later, okay? What's happening with Owens? I wouldn't bother you, but I couldn't understand half of what those doctors were saying. <laughs> it's all right, Lieutenant, I understand. You ever tried to read one of their prescriptions? Here, let me see if I can make it a little bit clearer for you. Come on in. Now, if you'll stand right over there. Now, these are Chris's x-rays. to the doctors, the impact of the bullet that grazed Chris's head jarred the soft tissue of the brain, causing a concussion. In other words, damage to brain cells. He'd have had a lot more than that if he hadn't been wearing a helmet. Probably deflected the bullet. <laughs> Thank God for small favors. The shock sustained by the brain causes the memory of all recent events to be wiped away. It happens to football players all the time. They call it getting their bell rung. Well, he's not a football player. He's a cop, and someone tried to kill him. So he's got to remember, because his life depends on it. There's a chance that he might recover fragmented images. Lieutenant, there's not much physically wrong with Chris. If he wants to go back on duty, I'd let him. If he sits around at home, it'll just depress him. Maybe if he goes back on the job, something will happen to jar his memory. Excuse me. Mrs. Danko, third floor. Yes, just a minute, please. It's for you. Riker. Yes, Pilar? A body. Whereabouts at Carl Cliffs? I'm on my way. It was a young girl. About 20 years old, Caucasian. She either jumped or fell. She had on a pocket with patches from different parts of the world. All she had in the pocket was a wallet with a couple of bucks. No ID. Okay, alert missing persons. Tell them whatever you can. Someone will show up at the morgue sooner or later and identify her. And I'll buy her face it once she's pretty badly smashed up. Governor's conference on Monday. I don't understand why that should cancel our days off. Oh, well, Jill around, Stan. She's got to. She's got no choice. The guy that I want to understand is the guy in the mountains that I rented that cabin from. I don't want my money back. Hey, man. Hey. How do you feel? Good. Everything is moving this should. You look good. Thank you. Officer Rollins, this is Saturday. You were told not to report back to duty until Monday at the earliest. No, sir. Your words were... Whenever you're feeling better, probably Monday. I'm feeling better today. Well, in any part of that day come back to you at all? Anything? No, sir. Terry told me wherever I spent the day, I came home about 5, dressed to go out, and left a little after 6. Where were you going, Officer Owens? I don't remember. Terry told me he had a date. Does that ring a bell? No, sir. I checked out all the girls that Chris has been dating lately, and whoever he was with wasn't one of them. All the girls? How do they number in round figures, Officer Owens? Well, I'm acquainted with six or seven, Lieutenant. Six or seven, I see. What makes you so sure it was a girl he was gonna go see, Webster? Oh, well, uh... 
Chris has this good luck cologne, Lieutenant. Called Mandar. Mandar? I've used that stuff. Six or seven. How about one or two? I'll settle for one. Is there something you would like to say at this time, Officer Dango? No, oh, sir. Th uh, no. Okay, I'll be right with you. I just... I'm getting out of here. Are you... I'm sorry, Owens. Are you hurt? Hey. Hey, man, you all right? Are you okay? You took a pretty good tumble. I'm all right. I'm all right. I remember something. What? I spun out on my motorcycle. I remember flying over the handlebars. Is that it? Anything else? I had a girl. Thursday, my day off, I met a girl. She was beautiful. Really liked her. What's her name? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, it's all right. It's a start. Don't get upset. It'll come back to you. Yeah, it's OK. I'll cite him. You check out his plates for DMV. Adam Frank, Robert Ludlow 9. Request DMV license check 655. Lincoln Henry Boy. Stand by, Ludlow 9. -er. Joe 
Jobina. What about Jobina? Hey, buddy, you're drifting away from me. You said a name, Jobina. Yeah, Jobina. Jobina Fair. We were here. We made a date for dinner later on that night. Okay, uh, where? All I can remember is Coral Cliffs. Friday morning, we found the body of the girl here at the bottom of the cliff. She must have fallen. It wasn't an accident. She didn't fall. She was murdered. She was murdered. It's hers. You okay? Come on. If you call almost falling on your face, fine, then you're nothing short of perfect, Officer Owens. Lieutenant, I'm okay. Look, I just felt a little dizzy for a minute, but I'm okay. You're okay when I say so. Drive him home, will you, Webster, please? Lieutenant, you said all days off were canceled. The governor's conference. I didn't see anything about sick leave. I'm marking you unfit for duty. Chris was right. There is a Jobina affair. She's a freelance photographer. Her last assignment was the Herald Sun, but they haven't seen her since Thursday. But they needed her pictures for tomorrow's Sunday edition. She submitted a batch on Tuesday. They made do with those. She lives at 4034 South Pacific Avenue. I'll send Homicide over there later, see if they can pick up something. Did you get a look at the guy? Medium height, medium weight, medium nothing. That gives him two days now to make himself medium scarce. He could be long gone. There is a Jobina Fair. She lives at 4034 South Pacific Avenue. 4034 South Pacific Avenue. 4034 South Pacific Avenue. <laughs> Trouble officer. I'm a firm believer in law and order. Chris, slow down. What's this all about? First of all, Jobina, I've got to tell you I'm a cop.
This better be good. It isn't. Thursday, a girl wearing your parka was thrown from the cliff where we were supposed to meet. No. Oh, dear God, no. Who was she, Jobina? Alice Markham. A girl who stays with me whenever she comes to town. Go on. She came Wednesday, the day before I met you. A half hour before we were supposed to meet on Thursday, I got a call from St. Louis. My sister went into a breech labor. They thought she was going to lose the baby, and I had to go to her. I tried to call you to break the date, but you weren't there. So you asked Alice to find me and let me know what happened. I gave her my jacket with those patches. I figured you'd spot it and you'd go to her since she wouldn't know who to look for. Who did she know in town, Chopina? That's just it, no one. Maybe he thought she was you. Maybe he was really after you. Me? Why me? That's what I'm trying to find out. I don't know. Did you open the door to my dark room? No, why? The times friends have walked in on me while I was working in ruined prints. Ever since then, I keep it locked. It's become a habit whether I'm in there or not. Jobina? There. Chris, two pictures are missing and a strip of negatives. Not missing. Burned. Why would someone break in and burn just two pictures? It doesn't make sense. It would if there was something in those particular shots I didn't want anyone to see. Like what? Wild hunting dogs? They were pictures of their cage. Were is right. Oh, I have more of the same. You do. A whole role I shot with another camera that I haven't developed yet. Can you develop that role right now? Why not? I remember this man. While you were getting coffee, he walked up to our table. And I had the feeling that he was going to just grab my camera and split with it, the way he was staring at it. Whatever he wanted was in one of those pictures. And maybe, just maybe, in one of these. But what could be so terrible about a picture that he would kill someone? Maybe the fact that he's in them. But why? Who is he? Jerzyk. His name is Anton Jerzyk. The pictures you gave us, we turned over to the FBI. They sent a telephoto of one of them to Washington. The CIA recognized them immediately. They have a file on Mr. Jerzyk. The CIA? He is suspected of having assassinated four prominent international figures in the CIA fields, and if he's here, it's for a reason. Sunwest Airlines? 
Yeah, give me your personnel department, please. Hi, personnel. This is Morris from Solar Insurance. Listen, we got a sick leave form here from you that looks like chicken scratch. Well, that's the problem. I can't read it. Can't read the names. There's no date on it either. Could you check it out for me, please? Just two in the last week. Could you read the names to me? Samuel Gross, engineer. William Teller, flight captain. Well, now, you see, that's the problem. The T looks like an F here, and the L's look like T's. <laughs> I guess that's it. And they're both still out on sick leave? Right. OK, we'll, uh, we'll process the insurance. Thank you. Jobina? What time was it when you took these? Uh, about 10 a.m. Why? Then this paper that Jerzyk had been reading almost has to be a copy of Thursday morning's Chronicle, right? I suppose so. It's the only morning paper. But whatever page this is, it's not the front page. It might help if we knew what that story was about. Could you blow this up? Yes, but not large enough to read the print. No, but maybe large enough so if we compared the blow-up to a copy of Thursday morning's Chronicle, we might be able to figure out what page it is. Doesn't that look to you like a small item has been torn out? Yes. It's the society page. That's it. That's the item that was torn out. Go ahead, read it. Miss Eleanor Henderson of Carson City, Nevada, who has been visiting friends in our fair city, will meet her father, Mr. Gordon Henderson, at the airport this coming Sunday. Mr. Henderson will be arriving from Las Vegas in his private jet, and the two will then fly on to Hawaii for a vacation of sun and surf. Is that all? No. Mr. Henderson is a member of the Nevada State Gambling Commission and has what? been... And has been widely acclaimed for his exposures of attempts to invest racket money in Las Vegas casinos. Just a second. Check with Las Vegas. I want an ETA on Henderson's private plane. Tell him it's due in here from Las Vegas. They can pick it up off his flight plan. And Pilar, ask them if that plane can be diverted to another airport. Yes, sir. Hold on, Oates. I want airport police Captain Martin, please. Communications, this is Lieutenant Riker. I want every car in Section 5 dispatched to the airport immediately. When they get there, they can stand by for further instructions. This is top priority. Captain Martin, uh, this is Eddie Riker. I have reason to believe an attempt is about to be made on the life of an incoming passenger. Gordon Henderson. Hold on, please. 
Captain, it looks like we have a break here. I have a revised ETA on Mr. Henderson's private plane. It's due in here at 5.45. That gives us 35 minutes to work with. 9.12, what is your ETA to the airport? 9.12, 10 minutes. Station Boy established. Station Charles established. Tell him. That's F as in Frank? No, that's T as in Tom. Captain William Teller, pilot. Okay. It's all wrong. Maybe we've jumped on a dead horse. Something should have turned up by now. Well, you've got a lot of men out here, Lieutenant. Maybe saw them and ran scared. Lieutenant Riker, I want all stations to check in, please. Adam, all clear. Boy, all clear. Charles, all clear. Attention all stations, the Henderson plane is now landing. With the officers on the boarding escort to stand by, you will board that plane, you'll surround Mr. Henderson and escort him to the command station. Let's do it. Dossier said on Jerzyk, a master disguises. You got something? Just a thought. If he was here, he'd probably be in disguise. Maybe a uniform. Maybe a pilot's uniform. Tuller. William Tuller, Sunwest Airlines. Why not? He dyed the hair gray or a wig, slap on a gray mustache. Call it in. Call it. Lieutenant, Station Charles, request double check on Tuller. Captain William Tuller. He's on our list of cleared personnel. We passed him on to the field about 10 minutes ago. No, wait, right, wait, now, wait, wait just a minute. Let me tell him something. That's a mistake. We didn't have time to give you more than unedited personnel lists. I happen to know for a fact that Tuller is on sick leave. All right, Webster Owens, did you hear that? I want you to move on it. Let's go. All right, attention all police personnel. Jerzyk is around here somewhere. I want you to be on the lookout for him. He is dressed as a pilot.
police personnel. We've just spotted Jerzyk. He's on a baggage train. He's headed out on the field in the direction of runway one, Abel. Thinking of Alice and how her parents miss her. And I wonder who should be on the other side of the cages, them or us. I like it over here just fine. Just think of what life would be like with you in one zoo and me in another. Don't make fun, Chris. I'm not. I know we're not a flawless species, Jovina. We kill when we're not hungry. We steal when we're not in need. We make war when we tire of peace. But sometimes... We die to save others. We can give when we don't have enough. We cry when others get hurt. And we can love. I want a picture of you. Oh, come on, Joby. Not today. No, come on, come back. on. Back against that rail there. Go on. Jovina, snap it. I'm finding the focus. Mm -hmm. 